Now we're going to take a look at physical behaviors of matter as they relate to the individual phases. And we're going to start with solids and liquids. And the reason we lump these two together, to be perfectly honest, is that they're kind of boring. Uh, there's not a lot to them. And it has to do with their lack of particle movement. Gases have much greater freedom of motion in terms of their particles, so there's a lot more chemistry to talk about with them. And that's why we're going to deal with them separately. Uh, they get their, their own unit in AP and college chemistry. But we're going to start by looking at liquids and solids. And like I said, we're going to put the two of them together. It is still important that we understand how they work and the characteristics. Liquids, we said before, are characterized by particles that vibrate about moving points. And we said another way of describing this would be that the particles wiggle around. All, right? All particles in every phase vibrate. That never stops. Particles would have to be at absolute zero to stop vibrating. But liquids are characterized by particles that vibrate and move around one another. They don't have to stay in place. Right? When we talk about cooling a liquid down and um, turning it into a solid, then we'll talk about how that vibration um, now will take place in a stationary spot. But liquids, liquids are characterized by particles that vibrate around. They move around. <clears throat> when a liquid turns into a gas. Um, people confuse the terms boiling and evaporation pretty often, and we're going to talk about this one, evaporation, and what's really important for you to understand is that evaporation describes surface particles escaping from liquid to gas. That's not the same as boiling, and it's important that you understand the difference between the two. Uh, in order to sort of illustrate it, <clears throat> let me pose a question. Can a liquid evaporate if its temperature is below its normal boiling point? The normal boiling point, it's not to, I don't want you to think that's like as opposed to the weird boiling point or the abnormal boiling point. Talk about the normal boiling point, we mean it at STP, standard temperature and pressure. So if we look at any liquid, can it evaporate without boiling is the question. And give an example. Well, yes, a liquid can. Any liquid can evaporate without boiling. An example on a hot summer day after it rains, you get mud puddles. And the mud puddles don't stick around forever. They do disappear. Now, if they were boiling, then every time you stepped in a mud puddle, you'd get a third degree burn. And since that's not the case, that means the particles have to be leaving, they have to be escaping and changing from liquid to gas. <clears throat> but the fact is, it's only the surface particles that do it. So mud puddles evaporate on a hot summer day. They don't boil. Make sure you keep those two things uh, separate, straight, as we move forward. Now, to piggyback off the concept of evaporation, we want to talk about something called vapor pressure. <clears throat> Anytime you have a liquid, since we said surface particles are constantly escaping, the hotter it is, the more particles escape from the surface. Well, as particles escape, they have to generate an upward pressure. Since that upward pressure is being created by vapor, we call it vapor pressure. So vapor pressure is the pressure created by particles that change from a liquid to a gas, particles that are escaping. It's an upward pressure created by liquid turning to vapor. Another question to help illustrate this concept. What happens if the vapor pressure of a liquid is equal to the atmospheric pressure? Now, one way of rephrasing that, we'd be saying, what if the upward pressure, that's the vapor pressure, was equal to the downward pressure, that's the atmospheric pressure? And hopefully, as you keep plowing through chemistry, uh, whenever you see an equal sign, it makes you think of this term, equilibrium. <clears throat> And that's exactly what you have. When the upward pressure created by a liquid 
is equal to the downward pressure on the liquid, you are at a phase equilibrium and the liquid will boil. And if we think about it logically, what we're saying is since these pressures are equal, it should be as easy for particles to escape from liquid to gas as it is for particles to return from gas to liquid. And at that, when the pressures are equal, those particles can escape from anywhere within the liquid. And uh, now we're not talking about just evaporation anymore, we're talking about boiling. Boiling is when any particles from the bottom, middle, or top of the liquid can change uh, from a liquid to a gas. And now on to the most boring of our phases, solids. Solids are all about particles that vibrate about fixed points. So these guys, we would say, are going to wiggle in place. They don't go anywhere. We already mentioned before, if, if something is not at absolute zero and nothing is, then the particles have to be at least vibrating. <clears throat> the difference between a solid and a liquid is that the particles of a solid don't move around. They vibrate in place. They become more, uh, more highly ordered. They're arranged uh, because of the attraction between the particles. And this one, I got to get rid of this word. The, the attraction between the particles as you lower the temperature, it doesn't become stronger. The IMFs are the IMFs. It's just the IMFs are now going to act over uh, shorter distances. And they also act, uh, they have more time, okay? They have more time to interact because the particles are moving slower. <clears throat> So that being the case, now the IMFs, they just become more prominent. When the particles are moving really, really fast, like gases, um, the IMFs just don't have a chance to work. They're still there, they just don't really come into play as much. And uh, one more concept I want to make sure we all understand, melting point and freezing point. These are the same, and it all just depends on the direction you're going, whether you're putting energy into the system or taking energy out. When we're cooling something or taking energy out, <clears throat> we generally talk about approaching the freezing point. When we're heating it or putting energy in, we talk about approaching the melting point. But those two temperatures are the same. The freezing point is the melting point and the melting point is the freezing point. Um, for example, with water, water freezes at zero, it melts at zero. So the melting point and the freezing point both describe the same temperature, same as boiling and condensing. They describe the same temperature. In order to take a look, we mean uh, by a, a, a rigid fixed geometric pattern. We also call it a crystal lattice. Here's graphite. You can see how the particles are all, uh, they're nicely arranged. Um, and again, you can see that there's a pattern here. I have no idea why it's not actually working, uh, but you can see the particle arrangement, it's regular and geometric. We call that a crystal structure. And the same, apparently the diamond's not working either. You can click on these, take a look, and you can see what we mean by a fixed geometric pattern. Um, and we also, like I said here, circle this term, crystal lattice, that both of those terms describe uh, solids. All right, so we're going to use this, we're going to move on, take a look at vapor pressure on the next page, and then we'll move on to gases.